everybody, it's Catherine and uh, welcome to a sunny Scarborough day. It's, uh, it's lovely out there, cold but lovely and sunny. Um, I've had a, a request from a lovely lady called Lynn Taylor and uh, she, she is partaking in this journal, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and she'd asked me if I could show how I intend to finish my pages off uh, to see a bit of an idea how some ideas of how to put the finished project together and um, everybody's going to do it in a slightly different way and like Rachel and Sarah they're showing the main pages and uh, are going to decide when they've finished their pages how they are going to turn it into a fabric book or the hardcover book with the fabric inside and Lynn has asked me uh, and I thought you know probably there are quite a few of you that are interested to see the sorts of ways that I would finish these projects off so I thought it's easier to make a quick video than trying to explain it by comment so that's what I'm doing I've got a few selection here of different fabric books that I've made in different ways so hopefully this is what you were wanting Lynn uh, hopefully there are others that find this useful and like she says some people are doing when you look on the um, either on the hashtag on Instagram or the uh, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery Facebook group everybody's doing things in different ways some are doing it on double pages some are doing it on single pages and um, it's it sort of can be a bit of a minefield if you're quite new to, to um, making fabric books or stitching or whatever so I'll go through what my intention is for the actual book before I show you some other um, samples examples so the book I've chosen uh, is this Oxford book of English verse and I'm hoping I think that uh, I'll be able to save the spine on this um, so that I can um, make a, a floating spine inside here and leave this spine um, intact and just strengthen it that is my intention of doing that um, now there are some really tatty old books that really you can't save the spine and you know you have to cut the spine off and um, there are loads of videos on YouTube if you look about how to do different spines how to strengthen spines make new spines that sort of thing so go and check those out if that's something you want some help with I have actually stuck these pieces on with three in one which is very similar to Fabri-Tac it's made by Beacon, Beacon three in one and it's more or less the same as Fabri-Tac really and because I want it to be you know stuck really well onto a hard cover um, that's that's the glue that that I've used there now with this I've wanted to keep the end papers here because they are really nice there's a lovely uh, book prize plate in there and um, they're intact so I'm leaving that so I'm just going to make this like I do my journals um, I either do a pamphlet stitch through the spine which I won't do with this because it's uh, I think it'd spoil it because it's a bit of a leatherette effect um, so more often than not I will get a really sturdy piece of um, like for example this this linen this upholstery fabric I would cut a you know a decent size chunk out and then I would uh, get my signatures and do the pamphlet stitch into that and then that will be stuck into the spine like that so to do that what I've prepared I've prepared double pages um, 
for the background so what I've got here is because it's initially a six month project and, and it may well go on to the year which I, I will do it as a year anyway for completeness I have put together some calico you don't it's fairly inexpensive I'm sorry I've forgotten what it's called in the States what calico is called um, you know it's the cheap stuff this is a thicker one there's different there's different thicknesses so this is a thin calico and then this is a, a slightly more expensive sturdy calico so if you can I for, for making a fabric book um, I like to get more of a sturdy calico I mean I don't know it's it's really cheap uh, inexpensive I don't know three pound a meter or whatever and I've cut some lengths to fit in here and these are double pages so I've done two signatures of three as double pages to go in my book and it's just like making signatures with a book if you're making a, a journal it's just the, the same principle have I got a journal that I'm in the middle of I have but they're all over the place <laughs> So for example, I've got a signature here, this is a signature that's going to be uh, sewn into a journal with the pages inside and so this is the same principle, you've just got to imagine that these page, these are your pages of your signature of, of Calico. Um, now some people are sewing directly on to the pages in the book um, and they're doing a page uh, for each each month and they're actually doing the sewing on one page and then they are sewing the back of the next page to it so that you don't see all the gubbins behind it all the workings behind it um, and then the next page they're doing the next piece of work directly onto it and then this page will be sewn down to cover cover it so that way you would need more more pieces because you're going to sew on one and then you're going to use the next page to back it and cover up your workings so you can do it that way I'm not going to do it that way um, what I've decided to do is um, so not so but stick my background onto the page itself so I've got three of these double pages I've put my title page there, I've stuck that down with three and one after I've done everything I need to do to it, all the sewing. And then I turn over the page and I've just pinned the latest one on for you. This is the month one. So there's my background. There's my bunny. I've done a, a video as well on that today. Um, and I have actually just pinned it on there just to show you. Um, that I will work on the piece as a single page and then I will stick it into the book and there's your first month done so what I've done with that in mind and I hope this is making sense I've cut another piece this thinner calico out what I've used here is thinner calico as my working piece my embroidery piece I've added all the background layers to it and then when I finish sewing everything that I want to on this so this is ready for next month I can then glue it onto this page so then we will have the title page we'll have month one with the bunny and then this will be month two two's piece whatever Rachel and Sarah and the mum decide is going to be the project for that when month two's finished we'll be able to turn over the page 
and I've got another piece cut which will be my background I'll do all the sewing on whatever it is and then I'm going to glue that down now I don't always do it like this but I think because I'm using this hard cover I've decided this is how I want to do it okay so it may well be that this isn't going to be um, sturdy enough or suitable for the next month's challenge in which case it may be that you've got to use a piece of thick hemp or something so I would then cut out to size this piece really thick lovely piece which actual fact from one of the packs I've bought from Rachel uh, and do whatever I need to it and then sew that on there so for me the pages are simply just there to be pages they're there to be to give structure to the signatures so if you you could make the pages with anything you know if you wanted to make them with um any cotton fabric or you might want to make them totally with thicker fabric or embroidery plain embroidery um not embroidery plain upholstery fabric you can do and then stick it on so that's how you would put together um double pages like that and then when they're all inside they're all full of the six months of project you've got a full signature there and then we'll go on to the next six months I've got signature two again I've got all the pages cut out ready and then when they're finished I would sew them by pamphlet stitch to some middle and then I would glue that inside that spine and your book your fabric book is is complete so I hope that makes sense doing it that way now I think you mean Lynn by some people are doing it double some people are just doing single sheets single pieces now this is a bit big to fit in here this is a, a single piece that I've done but it is rather large so what other people are doing is they are not thinking about how the book's going to be structured until it's finished so they are making um they've decided on a set size so for example this is larger so say you haven't decided what book or what means you're going to turn it into a fabric book till the end cut yourself some some fabric this is seven by seven and a half and if you make every piece like that you will end up with six pieces like this and then decide how you want to complete your book it may well be and i'm going to show you some soft covers and it may well be you do it that way or you get a book that's bigger than this and you still do the principle of the the signature pages out of calicos for example and then you would stick these on when you finish them all so if if you've not seen uh, the collaboration that uh, Suzanne Eastdale has done with Rachel and Sarah was in that as well last year um, there were quite a few people in that collaboration there was Anne from Anne Brook and uh, Melanie Sullivan and and what they each did was they decided a set size say for example this seven by seven and a half and then they would sew their piece and send it to the other uh, participants and they all ended up then at the end of it and this is what Rachel I think is only just deciding how she's going to um, showcase the pieces all of them in that collaboration have just ended up with I don't know six or seven or eight pieces single sheets of of finished embroidery and then you can do whatever you want with it at the end um, so that is you know you either decide how you're doing the book to start with 
um, which I think I believe that's what um, Lynn you were wanting to to you couldn't sort of envisage it um, and hopefully this this gives you an idea of how it would come together so that is a hard book now what I also often do and these are just easy little little pieces um, I get pieces different fabric so this is just again that same upholstery fabric and I put different um, pieces inside it different fabrics and as long as you haven't got too many pages I actually sew down that with my sewing machine again with a hundred needle or jeans needle you really need you can get upholstery needles you get jeans needle um, a thick needle and you know you be I, I, I quite easily got through that and that's made a little fabric book now with this you could either sew on each individual page if you wanted to but bearing in mind you, you've got the back showing so you know you may well not want to do that you may well want to do a small piece of embroidery so say for example some bits I've just been messing with as as um, to put in a journal so say for example this is my embroidered piece and I've done some stitches on it it's a small piece yes but I want to to show that off in a little uh, fabric book like this then you know it's just a matter of, of gluing that into that and by the time you've glued several little pieces inside there you have got yourself a lovely little fabric book so if you are quite new to stitch in and you don't really want to to take on too large a piece because I mean this is this is quite a large piece um, what I had left over from when I did sew for the soul book which I'll come to in a minute um, you can start off like this you can start off with a soft cover um, and just sew your pages together and work on them uh, as Sarah and Rachel bring out the prompts every month uh, you could still put a little hard cover on that or you can leave it as a soft cover and I like to keep my edgings I love my edgings they're great so this was from a bit of some Liberty fabric so I've just tied that one up with that so, so you could do it that way then this is a um, this is a mixed fabric and it's not so much really an embroidered book as such but I thought I'd bring it to show you um, this is a mixture of fabric and card and paper and <coughs> excuse me I just have a slurp of my water so this is made on the same sort of principle let me find the middle so you put all your sheets together this is a mixture of um, fabrics and again these are these are from a pack that I got from Rachel sorry me claw hand um, and you put them all together like a signature you put some pretty um, embellishment a little pocket there with some lace and um, some I've made some paper fabric there and you do the three hole pamphlet stitch um, and that's your middle and then that makes yourself a lovely just a nice size that actually I really like this one it's made a lovely um, fabric book that it's mixed fabric and paper and if you wanted there's nothing to stop you using paper um, put some paper in with your background um, you know we don't know what's coming up uh, with other projects it may be that one of the prompts that uh, the girls come out with is use a paper background in which case this you know you could use to start with make a book a mixture of the two so that is another way that you could use it and I really like this I think it's a cute little book I made a pocket there some bits in that's got a little embroidered flower on there that I've just sewn round 
um, and a little book with some scraps to go in there <coughs> excuse me so that's another example right okay now you could also do it this way with a wrap around to make make it a book so you could get let me get back to my let me get back to my um my signatures so i've got a set of signatures here let me take them both out and then we know where we are okay so we've got our signatures here and say we've got a plain one on the front so i've got some extras there so say they are our signatures and you're going to sew on them and stick on like I, I've already discussed. And you've got all those lovely edgings to it. You may well want to make a feature of those edgings. You may have things dangling off it or beads on it or whatever as we go along. But you don't really want to put that in a hard cover or a soft cover. You'd like to have these edgings showing. Like... I know that these are paper signatures but they have got some lace edgings hanging down and what I've done here is I've made a wrap around for it so these are signatures um, that I've made it's got some fabric in the middle of those um, and put some embroideries inside it done a belly band embroidery there so you, you know I've actually stuck my embroidery onto pay, pay, thick cardstock paper and the same with this one so there's some different embroideries in there so imagine that you've done all that work in these fabric signatures for this project and you've got them and you want to showcase the spine so you could actually make a wraparound embroidery piece to showcase what, you know, your spines. So in that instance, you would do yourself some cut a long strip of calico or, or upholstery fabric and you would make a cover in embroidery and I mean obviously you don't want it as long but you have got let's for example do it like that okay so you've got uh, an embroidered whoops <laughs> I'll stick it to the velcro with the with the hand thing <laughs> Um, you have got a lovely embroidered piece around your book and when you turn it on its side you can see the side of the embroidered wraparound piece and then you can see your signatures inside as well so in a way you don't have to put it in a structured structured book you could use it as a wraparound this one is actually you know not a full size but if you wanted you could make this embroidered piece the full full width of your signatures um, and completely um, cover it up so say for example your book was you've got a book that's this let me use this as an example so you've got your book if you want then you could make a wrap around that's the same size and you've there got your book cover but it's not structured you can just put some velcro on like I do or some poppers or something and um, <clears throat> just another way of holding all your stuff together there we go so that and I just think for that just makes <coughs> makes for an, something a bit different and also you know we don't know we might be 
putting some fancy dangles at the bottom you might want some of your lace hanging over um, you know you can develop it as we go along that's the exciting thing we're not sure what's going to um, come out as our background and focal point every month from Rachel and Sarah and then finally um, this took a bit more working out this is my soul for the soul book that I did in 2020 uh, with um, Anne Brook and this is totally a fabric embroidered book um, and this was made slightly different this the book was made first so how this is made is we have got thick wadding so say for example we've got a signature here and instead of calico I haven't got any it's all in the loft but you know the wadding that you put in quilts so you cut it so that you have your signatures made out of wadding you do extra because what you in fact end up doing let me show you because I'm so keep forgetting to sew this end page together so this is the wadding and you would make double so you'd make 12 make sure you've got 12 sides of wadding for a six month project because what you're actually going to do is each page has got your embroidery stuck on it like this has and then the wadding is in the middle is then sewn together so the that is sewn onto a piece the wadding page that is sewn onto the wadding page and then you're sewing them together to make um, your book and how you actually do that which you can't quite see I'm trying to think if uh, if it's this because this is the cover which I did last um, but the middle is all the everything's falling out now the middle is all the wadding I'll put that back in there so what you would do then is you get 12 pieces of wadding folded in half like this and how we did it for the uh, so for the soul book with Anne is we did a blanket stitch through the signatures to sew all the signatures together to make the book from the start so in this inst if you do like to um, have your book made from the beginning so that you know uh, the structure of it and you know what you're working with then this would be a, a good suggestion for you so you would um, if you haven't got the wadding you would just use 12 pieces make sure you've got 12 sides of your calico basically all it is is that you would sew on there okay you wouldn't do anything on there on the middle and you would sew on there and then you join those two together and that would make one page so you don't have to do it with wadding this is just makes a nice quilted feel to the book um, and you do your embroideries on and then you would sew or stick those two layers together so you don't see the backing and that way you would have your book already made it's quite a chunky uh, chunky one in the end you would have it already made so that might be an idea Lynn that if you do like to see the finished article make it like that and then you can you know you can sew on a page or you could you know like here if you imagine you've got a page between there so you don't see the back you would sew them two together 
and then the next page here you would sew on there you'd put something on there say for example you've got this as your sewn piece that's your sewn piece you've got all the workings out here you don't want to see so you leave that and then when we come to the month after we leave that and we would sew on there so that you're always sewing two pieces together so you don't see so that you don't see the middle so I hope that makes sense it's it's a bit difficult to show you that one when it's obviously already made and then I you know just made a tie around this one with a, a lovely uh, big toggle button um, and that way your book is already made for you uh, before you start but you must remember that you've got to cut out extra pages because you're going to um, you're going to sew on one side that is the back and you've got to think that you're going to be covering the backs together so you turn a page that is your best side and therefore you've got two two reverse sides full of sewing knots and gubbins there and you would join those two together to hide the middle gubbins and you'd have a lovely page to look at embroidered there and a lovely page to look at there and then the next month you sew on here lovely embroidery you've got all the gubbins there you turn that page you do the lovely sewing there the month after and then you just join your, your page your middle of your your double page is full of um you know full of the backs i've backed that but full of the the sewing you know the reverse that you don't want to see and you just sew them together you know and you can make a feature of sewing them together so I hope that's helped I hope I've not confused everybody um, and I hope that's what you were you were meaning Lynn um, if I've misinterpreted what you wanted me to show you um, please let me know um, but I think you know you uh, I decided to do the proper video because I think you know it's nice for you to get choices um and uh you know rachel and sarah are the first ones to say make this your own do it in your own way um and these are just some ideas of how you can um put your embroidery pieces into fabric books okay then so thank you for joining me let me know if you've got any questions down below or if there's anything else you'd like me to to explain or show you with regards to um making books you know fabric and doing embroideries and uh, i'll see you next video please take care bye for now mm -hmm.